also have stamped the two um, tulip heads, the large tulip heads, the open and the closed. And we'll go ahead and paint those first of all. Um, like the other videos, I'm going to just paint the separate components and then we'll come back and I'll show you how to put them together in a composition. But remember that on the on my website there's the gallery, so you'll see all, hopefully, lots of inspiration there for finished um, boxes, cards and all kinds of other things you can do with the, with the um, images from the stamp sets. But this is, we're looking at the technicalities of it here and actually how to paint it. So I've taken some orange which is from set three, or the sunflower set. And I'm also gonna take um, some of the, what is this one called? Red, that's great. I was gonna call it something really exotic. And it's just called red. Fantastic. All right, so now I'm using my half inch flat brush. As you can see, this one's well loved. Look at the handle, I've used it so many times, but it's still perfectly shaped and it's stained but it doesn't matter it's still good to go or as usual I'm going to wet it then I'm going to dry it on some kitchen paper then I'm going to scoop and scoop scoop and scoop and then smoosh the same same thing so scoop again keeping the same sides and smoosh isn't it lovely when you've got dogs in the house bless that little cotton socks so can you see I'm going to load this in Oh, four or five times. You're actually better off not putting as much on and getting loading it more um, kind of um, kind of controlled fashion than trying to scoop it in and getting it all smushy on the brush in two or three. I hope that makes sense. All right, so we've got that pretty much. I'm just going to tip it one more time. You want it about halfway up the brush, you want it nicely blended. Let's do, funnily enough, the open tulip is easier than the closed one. So I'm going to start at the very bottom and I'm going to pull the brush up really long strokes and ruffle towards the top of the inside of the flower making sure I've covered all the lines if possible now I will say I've used a dark ink here normally I wouldn't do that for the tulips because um, if you don't want to see the line the ink showing through use something like a dove grey stays on or a really pale water based ink if it's just on card um, or something like that but I've used the docking so you can see what's happening so you can see I've made kind of an upside down teardrop shape there now I'm going to reload the brush again this is really important when you come to do those side areas that you've got freshly tipped especially the light area the light color so in this case the orange I've really tipped it on the brush again I'm going to put do the right side because that's easier I'm going to put the brush down I'm turning it slightly I'm pivoting I'm not really moving the brush yet I was just doing a little wiggle there, pivot, and then I'm going to come across and I'm just going to lift up and that's that side painted. So you can see it was more of a little, little manoeuvre that going on there. Try, just practice that brush stroke just without anything, of course the laminated sheets, that's what they're there for. Just practice that little movement like that as if you're staring around the bend. Now, to make this side easier, which it, it won't be where it's at, that's going to be a bit tricky. I'm going to turn it around and I'm going to move towards myself this time. So I'm going to reload the brush again, then make sure that light side's tipped. I'm going to point the brush at the base of the flower, and if you don't get it right first time, just take a minute to get it right. And I'm going to, see so I'm turning it. There was no movement there for a while, I was just turning. And now, I'm just going to lift up. Now that's a little bit tatty there at the end. Sometimes you can get away with just using the chisel of the brush just to tidy it up. Other times you've just got to concede defeat and paint over it again. Let's try that. So let's go again. And if that happened, if it did happen again, just, you know, ultimately, seriously, we're not looking at, um, you know, tech, showing off your technique here. Or at the end of the day, you just want to know that this looks good. So look, just use your small round brush. This gets you out of loads of problems here. And just just tidy it up you've painted the bulk of that flower with that technique it, I mean it's, it'll be done in no time but if you there's nothing to stop you just tweaking it slightly if you need to and you're not going go to go to paint fusion jail if you do that so that's that one you can see hopefully nice and clearly there if I get my cameraman to give me the thumbs up all right so let's look at the closed one now okay 
so let's just I've still got the brush loaded so I'm just going to continue with what I have on here so the center again it's always the center just paint over the outside petals because you want it to look actually I think that's how it grows so let's just concentrate on the ones that are inside and then we'll do the wraparound ones on the outside so can you see there that's fine but there's a little gap all you do is just use the base the dark color because that's the dark color we're talking about and just fill in like that so now you've got that nice little ripply effect and now let's do the outside petals again now my brush is starting to look a little bit gloopy I'm not it's it's a little bit you see the way the ends are a little bit ragged frayed I'm actually going to clean it um, it's, I haven't got as much control as I had before so clean it when it gets to that stage and then just reload it again so you can see I've cleaned it and now I'm just going to pick up the colour again every now and again do that because you'll find that when it starts to your brush starts look a little bit tattier and you for some reason you're thinking it's not working the way it did it's time to do that okay now same thing I'm pivoting and I'm turning a little bit I'm looking at the outside and then I'm just going to pull up and do that. Now again, I'm just going to tidy that up. I'm, I'm literally going to cheat. I don't care. It's a fair cup and I'm going to do it. Because I want to show you how, you know, you don't want to spend forever mastering it just because you can get it done perfectly in one. It doesn't matter. If you can get the majority of it done in one, then that's good enough for me. The more you paint these, the easier it will become. And if you haven't painted them for a while you'll find that you might need to do a couple of brush strokes to get your hand back in. Now that side turned out much better. Can you see? Much nicer shape. But I'm hoping you're noticing the way with brushes. I'm going to, you know what, let's just paint a one along the outside here because it doesn't matter, it's just for instruction. This is the kind of brush stroke I'm doing here. Can you see the way my brush is wiggling? And then I'm coming up like this. Now that end wasn't as tidy, but I can... I can live with that. We can work on that with a small brush again. But that's the kind of shape you're creating for the ends. Like I say, I think start with the outs, the one that's um, curved out, the open tulip. You might find easier to start with. And then I'm just going to take a little bit of this orange, like I said, and we can just tidy that up. And even just that little end. That's that's really all you literally need to do. That's why the bushes are in the set. They're there to be used. Can you see this one here? Let's just I'll show you how I would tidy that one up. See, that's good enough for me. Right, so there you have your two tulips and how to paint them. Real time, close up brush strokes. Hopefully you got all that. So I've stamped out the leaves here, um, so I'm going to show you how to paint those. So again, wet the brush. Now, if you were painting on a really quite absorbent surface, um, these are long brush strokes, so maybe don't dry the brush off as quite as much as you would normally do. Just blot it just once, so it's a little bit wetter. Can, hopefully you can see on my fingers there, it's just a little bit wet. That just means that the paint will just go a little bit further for you. Now, what I'm doing, actually I'll move a bit closer so you can see, I'm picking up, I'm using the yellow from set three of the sunflower set and I'm using the forest green from the foliage set and I'm just blending the colour in there again usual thing scoop and scoop and smoosh and then let's get this nicely floated I'm going to pop the yellow the pity towards the centre of the leaf so it's going to look like the left hand the right hand side in shade pull down light light pressure heavier pressure curve the brush a little bit heavier pressure moving up now can you see I've missed that little bit there and what happens is when you lift up if you miss it you get a join so what you do there is start again start from the bottom and go over it again right so let's do that again so light heavier pressure lighter pressure a bit heavier pressure and then pull up and again you know what if you need to tidy up this a little bit this is where that small brush comes in just go ahead can see that I didn't like that little lump there, that little ripple. The rest is I'm happy with. Also note how I've taken it further than the actual stamp. That's what you want to do. You don't want to just keep them static like that. In fact, some of them you're going to extend quite a lot. So the near this side again, because right hand is going to make it easier than painting away from me, turn it around. So let's load that brush up again. okay so I've got that nicely loaded and I'm going to start this way 
put them towards me this time. Heavy pressure, heavy pressure with a little wiggle, a little heavier pressure. Let's extend this one quite a bit. Let's just see how far we can do this one. See, that's that's so you, if you want, if you've got a really tall composition, something like a, um, the wine box, for example, you can really drag these leaves up. So that's how you paint the leaves. In fact, one more quickly one. Let's do a quick one. Let's show you how to paint a folded over leaf. Because that was a question someone had asked. So you would come up like this and then just go back on yourself. Okay? And again, that little bit there where it ran out of paint a little bit, not a problem, we'll just fill that in. Because that'll be in shadow there. So as long as you use the appropriate colour where you need it, and there's your folded over leaf. Okay? Right, now, we're going to find the finish with a finished composition. Um, and there you go. So this is what I've been working on. Pretty, isn't it? Not. Um, that's how horrible it really is going to look for a while. All I've done is map all the things out. I stamped the tulip heads where I wanted them. Fives again. Um, apparently you go to flower range in jail if you do even numbers. So five tulip heads. Then I put the leaves in. And again, you can see the leaves are nowhere near big enough and tall enough for what I need. But can you see how I've painted a few in and extended them? That's the first thing to do. Paint the leaves in. Then... Actually, some of the leaves I might paint over the tulips as well to make them more natural. But get these ones mapped in, paint them all in. I've already started these. Extend them. Then get some of the emulsion paint and blank out where you've got the green coming over your flowers. So either emulsion or the um, the antique white will work nicely just to blank over there. So when we paint the tulips, the colour will be nice and fresh. You won't see the leaves showing through them. And then we're going to come back and I'll show you how we've, I've finished that. So there you go, magic of um, photography. I've continued and that I would say would be kind of a finished composition really. So just to recap, I mapped it all out, it looked horrible as you saw. Then I painted in some of the leaves and um, then blanked in where I had the leaves were showing through the flower heads with some emulsion or some of the antique white paint. And then painted in the flower heads. I put in the stems, mixing a little bit of the green with the red and then I went over and I painted in some more leaves in the foreground so it makes it look more natural as if they're, they're actually grown in amongst the foliage as well. Um, there you have it, tulips.